Talk. I'm Lindsay Kearns, the mama behind MalibuMamaLoves.com, and I'm also a certified conscious trauma-informed life coach. You guys, when we're talking about our mental health, we absolutely need to talk about what we're eating. One of the biggest things we can do for ourselves to keep us on a healthy path is to learn about the foods that we're eating. You see, modern society tells us that foods from a box, from a can, from a bag are quick and easy and even sometimes organic. Not whitewashing, we gotta be careful for it. They say, try this, it's fast and delicious. Ad after ad is telling us. Our genius marketers have us convinced that fast and easy is good and healthy for us. But that's not the case. Our bodies do not like processed, boxed, canned, or bagged food. It isn't good for us. So do we change our perceptions and learn about the foods that we're eating? Or do we just go with the flow and hope that we don't lose our bodies to diabetes, heart disease, obesity, high blood pressure, or many other atrocities that can happen because it's fast and easy? My choice, I wanted to learn. I went on a whole food revolution. I was raised in the 80s with, uh, what were those things? The um, TV dinners and all that microwavable stuff that we thought was great. But once we started learning about them, we realized just how bad they were for us. And as I started to learn more about foods, my taste buds changed. I got more excited about it. I started listening to my body and seeing the, the effects that this food was having on me. I hadn't done that before because I was so busy with everything else. I just thought, oh, they say this is healthy and easy and good. I'll just eat it and keep running and not realizing that I wasn't fueling my body to the best potential that I could have been. So let me give you a quick digestive system breakdown, okay? Because this was very enlightening for me. You think, oh, you eat food and your body takes what it needs and then it you know, deposits the rest, but that's not actually the case. So here's how it works. The eating process, the digestion process begins as soon as you even start to just smell that food and see that food. Your mouth starts to produce saliva. Your teeth then, once you put the food in your mouth, that all that saliva is in there and your teeth starts to break down that food to make it more soft. Your tongue mixes the food with the saliva to prepare it for its journey down the esophagus. The softer, the better. So it makes sense when they say you really need to chew your food. And I didn't always do this because you're in such a rush when you're eating, right? So you never think, or, you know, you, you didn't used to think, I didn't used to think that, you know, it mattered. I just wanted to get it down and get moving, right? But it's not because if it's not soft enough when it lands in your stomach, it's not going to be digested properly. So you won't, your body can't use those nutrients. The stomach then produces acids and enzymes that further break down the food and grind up the food. When the food takes a completely liquid and pasty form, it then moves on to your small intestines, which really aren't that small. <laughs> These are literally about 20 feet long, coiled up in your body. They further break down the food, and this is where your nutrients are absorbed, all within your um, small intestines. The pancreas, liver, and the gallbladder all help the small intestines by producing each of their own special ingredients to help break down the food. It next passes through your large intestines, which are smaller than your small intestines, so I'm not sure how that happened. <laughs> Those are only about five feet long, um, and they're all coiled up, but they, they take the waste and they pass that out to your stool, and I'm pretty sure you know where that goes next. <laughs> so now that you have a little bit of understanding with your digestive process, and hopefully in hearing that, you learn to just chew a little bit more because that is so beneficial when you are eating, which foods are best for our human bodies? The thing is, we were discussing last week that intuitive eating. I really believe in that. I don't believe that there's any one diet, any one particular food that's perfect for everyone's body. You need to learn that for yourself and pick and choose and find out what works best for your body. Because we have those larger small intestines, our bodies digest high quality foods that are dense and smaller in volume and easy to break down the best. So that means those softer foods, or if you're eating meat, you've got to really chew it up and get it to be very soft. There is one very interesting thing though that I've noticed with all diets, right? All the common diet forms, they all have one major thing in common. And that's that they acknowledge the difference between real whole foods, leafy greens, vegetables, grains, things like that, and the fake foods, like the Franken foods. Now, just to give you an example, that is like grass-fed meat, 
versus the, um, uh, sorry, the several grass-fed meats, they, um, or the grain-fed meats, right? The grain-fed meats are often referred to as Franken-meats because they're filled with steroids and all kinds of nasties that don't help. And it's actually been suggested that if all Americans switched to grass-fed meats, our national epidemic of obesity would diminish, okay? And there is a significant dif difference. The grass-fed meats contain much less fat than the grain-fed meats do, but they contain a lot more of the omega-3 fatty acids and CLAs, which are both very beneficial for our health. The grain-fed fed meats, as I said before, they're filled with steroids and other nasties. So as I said, it's really important to recognize that. Now, as you're going through this process, what I found best to be is instead of focusing on, oh, I can't eat that, I can't eat this, I wish I could have that, focus on the positives. It's actually really exciting. And I, I talk about this a lot of the times when I was in my food revolution, I always say I love Doritos and Snickers bars that, and milk. That was like my weird combination through college, I don't know, but um, I always used to love that. When I started my food revolution and on the first day, I thought, okay, I'm gonna eat certain things and see how that makes my body feel. And I really started listening and I never noticed before when I had eaten the Doritos and Snickers and milk, I was feeling so sick afterwards, always a stomach ache. Yet I noticed when I was eating salads or, um, you know, grass fed meats or, you know, healthy, more sustainable things, I was feeling good, powerful. Smoothies made me feel like I could take on the world. So it's really interesting when you start this process to just, you really want to focus on the, the um, positives and really listen to your body. That's where we bring in that intuitive eating. Listen to how these things are making you feel. Check in with your body. Notice when you have a fast food, greasy burger and french fries, how productive are you that afternoon? As opposed to if you go out and have a really good salad or um, a nice piece of meat and some veg, how do you feel then? right? It, it does make a difference. So I want to share with you eight quick little tips on um, things for you to focus on as you're going on your food revolution and learning, because this does, it does affect your mental health, how you're eating. It really does. Have you ever heard the term hangry, <laughs> right? When we're hungry, we get angry. <laughs> if we're full, we get sleepy. You know, it, it definitely affects if we have just the right amount of food, we can take on the whole world. So it's important. So here's real quick, eight easy tips to do. Um, my basic food tips for conscious eating, right? And intuitive eating. You want to avoid processed foods at all times. I'm sorry. There's just even the things that are marked organic. Processed foods are not healthy or safe. They still have the preservatives and lots of other nasty ingredients. So it's important to keep it simple. Keep it as local as possible. Seasonal is great because that's something to get excited about when you can have, you know, squash is big in the fall. You get excited to have your squashes, um, things like that. You guys, I know you don't want to hear this one, but you need to limit the white sugar. I actually kicked it completely out of my house. I mean, come on, you guys, they compare it to crack. It does the same thing to our brains as crack does. So why are we eating this stuff when there's great other alternatives? Um, it's, it's just so bad for us. It, wreaks so much havoc in our bodies, but that's a whole other episode on white sugar. Oh my Lord. Load up on the fruits and veggies. Have as much as feels good to you. They are good and have fun trying new fruits. I like to go to the farmer's markets with my kids and we find something we've never seen before and come home and Google it and experiment with it. It's a great thing to do. Don't be afraid of proteins and fats. We need them. There's healthy. Um, there's also, this is how our hormones work with these proteins and fats to build the proper energy blocks for our sleep and our energy during the day. They're important for all of us. My fifth tip is a big one and I've already said it. Listen to your body. Listen to it. Our bodies tell us everything. Our bodies are amazing. They were designed to survive. They can guide us. We just have to listen to them and not the media. <laughs> Always drink clean water. I'm gonna do an episode on water just because it's so important and most people don't realize how bad the water is coming out of our taps that we need to filter it. Clean water is imperative. Our bodies are made up of mostly water, as you know. So drinking bad water isn't gonna help us. We need to really be sure. Share the excitement as a family. 
or with your partner or your friends. You know, get a group together as you go on your food journey and have fun exploring and learning together. It makes the experience that much more fun. And lastly, when you're eating, enjoy the food. Don't be eating just to be in a rush and to fill yourself up. Stop and take that time and enjoy the food that you're putting on your plate and you're eating. Understand where it comes from. Just be glad that you have it. With all the starvation in this world, it's time we start being thankful for what we do have right here and right now. And on a final note, I think it's really important to respect food. It's our fuel. It sustains us. Without it, we cannot run and live and work. So when you think about it, putting things from a box or a bag filled with chemical preservatives into your body, is that really better than eating an organic apple grown in your town? Common sense says no, guys. Come on. Listen to your body, respect it, and fill it with good fuel, and it will take you a long, long way. And real quick, I just want to mention and give a shout out. This is literally one of my favorite books. Everyone who comes into my house has to read this. You Are What You Eat by Dr. Jillian McKeith. It's amazing. It's, it's a little bit of an oldie, but I still refer to it all the time. And this is really where I learned about food combining and that when we eat certain foods together, it can have certain effects on our bodies. So it's a phen phenomenal book. I highly suggest it. But I just want to get you guys going on this Monday to remember and think about what you're eating because it definitely adds to your mental health, <coughs> excuse me, um, to keep your mental health and your physical health stable. It is super, super important. So I'm going to leave it there for today. I hope you guys have an amazing week. I hope you eat healthy. I hope you think healthy. I hope you make great choices. And I hope you conquer the world this week. We'll see you right back here again on Wednesday. Don't forget to give this video a like and to subscribe up there. All right, we'll see you next time.